On February 16th, 1942, at approximately 6.30 a.m., the sound of gunshots and artillery filled the cold morning air, followed by the sounds of air raid sirens as warplanes dropped ordnances on the banks of the Red River. Eventually, the city experiences a total blackout. The city of Winnipeg, Manitoba is under siege from Nazi forces. The skirmish that took place on the outskirts of the city now has a Canadian military on the run as they retreat to set up a perimeter around City Hall. By 9.30, the mayor and members of parliament surrender to the new Nazi occupation. Additionally, members of the government are then handcuffed and sent to a makeshift concentration camp just north of the city. Tanks begin to roll throughout the city streets, as well as German patrols, who immediately start harassing civilians and ordering them to present their papers. Over at City Hall, the Canadian flag was lowered and replaced with the swastika flag, and Winnipeg was renamed to Himmlerstadt. Now I know what you're thinking. If none of this sounds familiar to you, don't worry. This wasn't left out from your history books. This totally happened, but it was an elaborate hoax staged by the Manitoba Finance Committee to sell victory war bonds. This day will ultimately be known as If Day, as in what would have happened if the Nazis invaded a Canadian city. It was all a simulation to remind Manitobans what exactly they were fighting for across the sea. There were local actors as well as props from the costume department in Hollywood. The tanks and warplanes were, however, property of the Canadian military and repainted to look like German tanks. The bombs that were dropped were in unpopulated areas along the Red River. The infantry troops fired blanks at each other to simulate combat and pretended to be wounded during battle. They were even carted off to makeshift first aid stations. A radio DJ was arrested and the local radio station was captured. And shortly after, the Nazis began broadcasting propaganda in an event not too different from the War of the Worlds broadcast in 1938 by Orson Welles with its dramatic realism and widespread panic. The makeshift concentration camp and politicians getting arrested was also staged but one person was not in on it. He later found out after the fact. When he saw the fake Nazis reaching City Hall, he went and hid in an empty office. They found him trembling and scared for his life. The fake Nazis searched buses and harassed locals, but unfortunately some took the acting too far on some occasions. However, there were only two casualties on that day. One man sprained his ankle, and a woman cut her finger in a panic while making toast. Even though the public was notified weeks earlier, which added to the realism of the events that took place, there was widespread panic. Schools and churches were boarded up, and books were burnt outside the library. A common practice performed by the Nazis during that time, whenever they sieged a city. Posters were hung by the fake Nazis around the city, which had very strict rules, such as, each farmer must report all stocks of grain and livestock, and no farm produce may be sold except through the office of the Commandant of Supplies in Winnipeg. He may not keep any for his own consumption, but must buy it back through the central authority of Winnipeg. And all national emblems, excluding the swastika, must be immediately destroyed. At about 5.30 p.m., the end of the event was concluded, with members of the International Ladies' Garment Workers' Union handing out and selling war bonds during a parade down Portage Avenue. This event was a huge collaborative effort to fund the war campaign. And surprisingly, it worked. The province raised over $65 million by the end of it. This stunt alone was a huge tipping point for Allied forces, and had it not have happened, it could have changed the outcome of a few key victories overseas. After If Day was concluded, it was praised across the nation as newspapers reported a huge success for the growing city of Winnipeg. Many places, including Vancouver and some American cities, copied and even borrowed materials from Winnipeg to stage their own similar events. All in all, If Day will go down in history as the first and only time a North American city was under Nazi occupation during World War II.